We have two original members with us tonight. For one, Jasper, the lighting engineer, has been with us the entire time. No, to the beginning. Okay. Well, Not okay, he came big. like a year later. And Paul Hankin is with us tonight. Yeah, we have well. old members with us. But I was, it was my oh, idea in the first place. Yeah. In around 1983. Um, and I haven't stopped, really, because it's just been an ongoing life journey, you know? So it's. Uh, the original idea was maybe when I was at school aged about 15, 14 or 15, and I thought, I don't want to be here forever, you know. And my grandmother said to me, you can probably leave school aged 16 if you want. And this was like a revelation to me, and I thought, wow, so there's birds in the sky flying, and I could be as free as them <laughs> in one year's time. And I was very happy about this, and uh, was already getting very, very obsessed by music, and then by the time I left school, I wanted to do nothing else at all, you know. I was. Uh, off and away, and haven't put the guitar down since to this day, you know? And so, uh, really, it was around then, yeah. When he was little, his mother made him make the sound of a river flowing and then a waterfall and the piano and just... Yeah, she used to sit there and say, describe to me a, a river as it begins and then gets bigger and ends up in the sea. And I'd sit there and play the piano like that and they were happy with this and encouraged me, you know, so... It's amazing seeing them all bring their kids nowadays. You see a lot of parents and kids, two generations. Together, and... yeah, it works so nice. And you see the kids on the front of the stage with their parents around them, protecting them from the <laughs> crazy people behind, you know? Um, yeah, so... Some of the kids are like Silas, though. Mm -hmm. They're 20 years old now, and they're right at the front. <laughs> yeah, but it has been a whole generation now, yeah. Nowadays, there are a few, and I mean, I think there always have been. When I first started seriously starting to do gigs around the place, there were maybe seven bands of a similar kind of style, not with the actual style, but in the kind of where Space they would play work. and where they would perform and stuff. <laughs> and there was about seven or eight of these different bands. And then gradually, as time went on, they kind of stopped and went off to do other things. And for some reason, we just kept going because the reason I and the rest of us do it is not purely for commerciality or money or whatever. It's an actual life thing. We need it like the breath of life to be able to exist. You're grumpy without it. Yeah, it doesn't. You know, <laughs> if I stop making music for more than three or four days, I start you, to wonder. You do get really grumpy, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, <laughs> it's my life thing, you know. So, yeah, happy. Well, this band wears people out. <laughs> Drummers take about five years. <laughs> <laughs> I think you get about that long. <laughs> yeah, and um, people also they they come into the band and they they learn what we do and then they have their own ideas, you know, and they like to go off and do their own thing. You know, and we they... learn a lot from each one of them, too. Of course, yeah. Often yeah. we learn a lot from them. They yeah. bring something different into everything as well, which is really unique. And there's recently been a lot of people from many different places. Our brand new drummer is from here. He's Hungarian. <laughs> we found him online playing one of our tracks and went, <laughs> oh, yeah, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. he, lives, <laughs> so he lives somewhere out of town, not in the town here. Hopefully soon. But, um, he lives yeah. in Peach. Peach. Peach? Peach. That's another town. Yeah, that's where he lives. And uh, yeah, he came and saw us in America. He just jumped on a plane and uh, there he was and uh, he started playing. He, he managed to record four tunes within about three weeks on our, in our studio. Which is unheard of for many drummers. Very really. good, very good. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and he's a really nice guy. And it's, uh, Lovely. Nice to have a bit of the European flavour in there. You know? He fits very well. Yeah. Too much, I do too much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just really looking for someone to replace me, please. Anyone who not wants to manage all your tentacles. Yeah, but not on the bass. Well, okay, no, I like that job. Like <laughs> I'll keep the bass part if that's all right. It's just the managing and the taxes and the, um, yeah, way too many things to do. Tour manager, band manager, I do the t-shirts, you know. <laughs> Um, there's a, someone I've finally been talking to recently who might help me out and fill the shoes at some point, but for the last 10 years I've been doing all of it. <laughs> Since 2002, really, I've been... I mean, it was just kind of, it just sort of happened, really. Um, You're in the right place at the right time, really. Well, I don't know. I was around the scene for quite a while. I, mm. I didn't want to bother the boys with their little club. <laughs> it wasn't my intention. And um, eventually, one bass player left, and we tried. I suppose we had another amazing bass player for a while. We had Vinny for a while before mm -hmm. we moved to 
uh, America, but we had to, I had to get out of England after a while, and we just had enough of the rain and enough of the music scene was getting a little more than uh, more to be desired. Than. <laughs> well, there is no method I could write down because every song is a different story, really. Um, a lot of it's accident. Yeah, normally what happens, really, for a lot of these songs, I wake up in the morning, have a tea, and then think the day's looking nice, have another cup of tea, take it in the studio, I switch the synthesizer on and start going, is it working? And then suddenly, uh, hey, hang on, there's, yeah, a, there's nice. an idea, you know? <laughs> Many songs have started like this. Also other ones, sometimes when all the band is together, we will jam and, and form stuff from that, and sometimes live recordings with improvisation comes through and we find little bits for that. Oh, he's from somewhere different. Maybe. Yeah, and then occasionally it'll be the picking up of an acoustic instrument, like a guitar or a flute or whatever, and just finding tunes. I hear tunes in my head all the time, so... There's too know. many to get down, are we? Yeah. They just keep coming and coming. <laughs> I had a telephone at one point which would record very easily, and I used to record a lot of things, but she left it on an airplane. Sorry. She left it on a plane, so someone has this phone <laughs> with all these amazing little tunes in there. <laughs> yeah, British yeah. Airways will have just destroyed it. I know. Shame. They're all gone. Oh, well. A thousand Arctic tracks. Still, there's a thousand more. Just like all the tapes. Mm -hmm. Well, we... Some and some. Yeah, we don't improvise as much as we used to. When I first started, we had no set list, no songs, nothing. We start with one note. And off we go, into space, you know. And, uh, that has become more and more into actual tunes. Now we've got lots of albums out, and so we rehearse the songs, and it's a bit more controlled now. But there's about three lift-off points during the gig, I think, where we can just say, OK, the song on the recording finishes here. We won't stop. We'll carry on and take it anywhere, depending on... And those bits get to be more and more by the end of the tour. It mm -hmm. gets to be about half and half. Yeah, because <laughs> I, I really like improvised music. It's my favourite point in the gig. I can stop thinking and fly into space with the guitar, you know? It's <laughs> a nice place to be. Well, that's a bit like asking if someone prefers to be asleep or awake, really, because <laughs> <laughs> in a way, the live is very, you're giving out and spreading to people like this, and then it's almost you look in the mirror and you, it goes opposite for recording, that's down to the finest little detail. You know, I'll spend a day on a five second little piece of a tune to get it perfect, you know? So it's a, both very different, both essential to my Mm. World. Occasionally I sleep and I eat as, as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually the last one I've made because I haven't heard it so much. Yeah, so, until you finish it, until you finally finish the master, and then you can't listen to it for, for a, year about a, year. a year and a half. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> you're tired of it, and then all of a sudden you put it on one night and go, oh, yeah. I can appreciate it. Mm -hmm. yeah. We, our, our drummer, our Hungarian Balaj, our drummer, is uh, fairly new. Therefore, we don't have such a wide because we haven't rehearsed so We have a lot, but we grab the ones that are doing the thing. Yeah. That, that sends people off. <laughs> but, you know, with more rehearsal, we'll be, get a wider repertoire and we'll be able to change them much more during mm. the gigs. And uh, we just see what the crowd seems to want and uh, try and bend it to the mm. requirements. Jasper, our light show Fruit guy. Fruit salad, light. Fruit salad, he calls himself. <laughs> Not Bumley. Bumley's Light Show. <laughs> he's going to change the name to Bumley's Light Show, but for now, he's called uh, Fruit Salad Lights. And he's been with us since very, very near the beginning. He uh, really makes it work with the music. He times it to the second and makes a whole journey for the, for the eyes as well as he the ears. He used to you know? come out with about 30 slide projectors stacked on top of each other. Yeah, it's very hard for us to say because we're busy playing the music. Yeah, <laughs> but people say it's great, you know, it really, really helps. If I won't we... leave home without him. So. Yeah, if we do a gig without a light show, it's... Unless it's in the daytime when it's nice because you're in the nature outside or something, but... Um... It feels weird if you're not strobing and ebbing and yeah, flashing. Yeah, sometimes we've it's done... It's too easy we, if you we... can see the fretboard. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> we've done concerts sometimes where you have one yellow light aiming at the floor, and that's all you have, that's and it's... so horrible. A little bit boring. A little yeah. <laughs> not really, no. I've got a really nice album on the way. There's, we've done some lovely recordings with our... I have a lot of things on the pipeworks, but I won't, I won't bore you with them because I could talk to you all night about <laughs> some of the festival things that I'm thinking about working on. But we won't get into that now. But when, <laughs> when we get home, we'll probably sleep for a week and then I'll switch over. You've got to finish the album. Exactly, yeah. Otherwise, the record company will have a head. Yeah, yeah. No, I look forward to that, going and finishing. I've got about 10 or 12 tunes which are all starting to sound.
Mm. Nice. No, it's good fun. And you so, might get Natan over as well. Yeah. Uh, we have an amazing electronic artist with us who's going to be playing after us tonight, uh, doing really interesting electronic music, and we've invited him over to come play around on the next album as well, because that would be yeah. really fun. The tracks aren't finished yet, so we're not quite sure of the last little bits. Maybe. We might, there's one we might. She even wants to play one of them, called... Uh, we well, it doesn't have a name. Should... No, it has no name. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes some of our improvised tracks, as, as we go through the tour, become more formed. We learn beginning, middle and end. Yeah, and there that. was a jam we were doing last time that's now on the new album. Yeah, and so that is, in, in that way, it is good. You can see which bits the crowd will enjoy and you can bring those bits out. And, uh... mm, yeah, we got really excited about that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Osric is a name from Scandinavia, actually, which I heard on the TV at one point in, my, in the background and thought, that's a funny name. And then that evening someone said, Osric, what and blah blah blah, you know, and uh, so we called it that because somebody came up to me at a festival when we were playing and said, "What's the name of the band?" And I went, "Osric Tentacles." And he wrote it down and he thought it was official. And he phoned me up the next day and said, "Are you still sticking with the Osric Tentacles name and all this?" So we did stick with it, but then we found out that if you look at the book of names and look up Osric, I think it means something really nice, like uh, shining bright cosmic energy. Yeah. yeah. You know so. That's fine. That was lucky, it didn't mean yeah. something horrible. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> and tentacles are passing to the Obviously, yeah. yeah. Spread around the world. <laughs> <laughs>